Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Factorio, and again I'm starting with that thing activated because buttons. So in the previous episode we finally placed down our lamps here so that you guys can see at night. And then we had to rearrange this stuff and add another boiler and another steam engine so that we can be producing more power so that we can power the things because we weren't quite producing enough power. We also almost finished setting up a green science production. We're going to be able to finally finish that up in this episode. And then we'll be able to research more things and have more fun. Which that's always good. And yes, we also need to make a, another underground belt real quick. So we're able to put this in now and this will be making the inserters. Oh wait, what? Oh! We have to use a level 2 assembly machine for that. Interesting. So I guess that's what we need to focus on next, is getting level 2 assembly machines. So, logistics level 2. Yeah, that was level 2, right? Yeah. Yeah, automation two. So that we can get level two assembling machines, apparently. We need that. Yeah, because the tier one assembling machines can only handle recipes that have up to two ingredients, and the inserters have three ingredients, which tier one assembly machines cannot handle three ingredients, apparently. But tier two can. But anyways, we'll be able to hook this up to make the green science. Need uh, another inserter, real quick. And underground pipes. Because why not? Why not? Well, there is no reason not to. In fact, there's reasons to to. <laughs> it's the only way, that's the reason why. She's rotated right. So, now once we get this guy sorted out, we'll have all the things we need to make green science. And then green science will be being made and put into the lab, and it'll work. And oh, yes. It is nighttime once again, but we've got the lamps to light the way. Oh yeah. We're making it in the world. So now we have to wait for this to finish doing its thing. So we need to figure out something to do for now. Something to do while we wait. I guess we can try and make a radar. <laughs> Almost done. That is quite the uh, quite the challenge there, making a radar. So what this radar will do is it'll explore the world for us, so that we don't have to. Ooh, spazzy screen. That that, what, that wasn't working. Okay, place that down. The radar requires electricity to run. It, it actually is quite a lot of electricity. But yeah, it's really starting to push it there now again so what the radar will do is just passively because as you can see here in the map the chunks here that are more brightly lit are the chunks that we can actively see now we as the player can see a 5x5 five five grid of chunks whereas a radar can see a grid of 7x7 seven seven. so that's this here the 7x7 seven and another thing that the radar does, as you can see there, is it'll just passively, just over time, it'll explore the world around us. Now, it does go out to a, a limited distance, though, and then you'll have to put down more radars that are further out to explore further out. But over time, they'll just explore out, and once they have fully explored out, then they'll just start rescanning areas within the area because chunks that are not brightly lit, so the ones out here, we if anything were to change there, like if the aliens were to come move in and establish a base, we would not be able to see that. 
until we went over and explored it again. However, what the radars will do is just over time, they'll scan the area again, and then it'll update that chunk, so anything that changed there, like the establishment of a, an alien base, will show up. So that's what that's all about. So that lasted a good couple minutes, when we still need a good couple more before this is done doing its thing. I guess we can try and set up a, a second lab. Which um, wouldn't, shouldn't be too difficult. It'd be pretty easy to work this out. I have two labs going and be able to make science much quicker. Twice the speed, even. Which means we're going to need also a splitter as well. Is that going to be enough room? I have a feeling it won't be. Nope. I have to move this down. Yeah, if we can just move this around a bit, it'll work. Just that for now, I guess. Okay. And now, this is beyond the maximum distance for the underground belt. Which is a bit of a problem. Um, but I think I've got a bit of a solution. That involves yet another underground belt, which means we need a bit more iron. We should have plenty of iron because it's been just sitting there for a little while. So if you just have a, a transport belt going in the side like this, anything on this side here will just go right in there. You can also use that to split the two sides apart if you ever have two different items on each one. Because it will only take that one side. Okay, so now that that's working, we can now hook this up, which as you can see there, even though the actual image of the science lab curves down a bit there, the actual tile for the thing is a full square, so it still inserts in that corner there. Just in case anybody thinks it shouldn't work, it does. So now, we're going at twice the speed! Oh yeah! We'll have our Automation Tier 2 research done in half the time. Which is still a long time, though. And we are using more power now that we've got a second lab. So we're going to need... We're already going to need to expand our power production even more. So much power. So we're going to need another boiler, another steam engine. Or a boiler there. Then we're going to need a inserter to put coal into this new boiler. And then, we can just pop our new steam engine up on the end of this one. 
Because as you can see here, the pipes could just go through the steam engine there, so we can just add in another one at the other end of this one, and there you go. Hook into the grid, and we are now making even more power. Oh, yeah. So, yes, what now? I guess we can just go collect stone while we wait. Or I guess we could even set up a little thing so that we can just get stone automatically over time. Nope, we're out of cables. Or poles, I guess, is the proper name for them. Oops. Oh, screwed that up placement. But oh well. Screwed that up placement. I speak English good. Okay. Ooh, wow. Really screwed up placement somewhere. There we go. more iron. You're constantly needing more iron in this game. Oop. Hooray! What do we do now? We can go for engines or, I don't know. I guess we can go for this for now. So we can hook this up real quick and then we can start producing our tier 2 assembling machine. We can finally hook up the inserters on the thing and start producing stuff. Oh, skipped a, a belt here apparently. There we go, now we got stone just coming in constantly, which is great. Now that we don't have to go all the way out there to get stone anymore. Finally make our tier 2 assembling machine. We can place that tier 2 assembling machine here. We can set it to produce uh, inserters and we can just make green science valves. Whatever you want to call them. Valve is not the correct word. There we go. Another thing that the tier 2 assembly machines open up is the ability to put in uh, modules here. So, yeah. Have two slots. Tier 3 assembly machines will have four. Here we go, our first green science bottle. Alright. As soon as Armor Crafting 2 is done, we can start making things with that required green science. Which is amazing. We've come so far. Yeah, so far everything is just in this small little area, though. Pollution? Not going that far. Thanks to all the, the f massive, dense forest around us just soaking it up like the world's biggest sponge. But yeah. Over time we'll eventually get to research the oil processing and we can start collecting up this oil here and we can start generating power from oil which we'll be able to get more power out, power out of the oil. We can begin to set up a proper power production facility and proper proper production facilities for everything in mean, actually. So yeah. 
don't know what to do for the next five minutes of this episode, really. Guess we can go exploring a bit, even though we got the radar going, we can explore manually still. Just see what's out there. The way the uh, aliens work is when we started the world, just initially like around here, so that's the center of the world, but also the center of the spawn chunk, or the, like, well not chunk, the spawn area of the world. The way that works is aliens will not spawn, or alien bases will not spawn within a certain area of your spawn point, so you can have a little bit of breathing room in the beginning of the game. Oh, we got aliens. First alien base out here. We'll get a closer look. There they are. Uh oh. Oh crap. Um, well. Well, we have got a gun. Um, 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 oh. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> About two hours into this world and we have died. But don't worry, you can just reload from a recent save. So, not a big deal. <laughs> so yes, we now know that there is an alien base up there. And we're going to need a bit better gear to go take that on. Alien bases are going to be a bit easier to take on earlier in the game. But as the game progresses and pollution goes out and they start to get affected by the pollution, they'll begin to evolve and they'll become harder to fight with. But let's go take them out, actually. Just show them what, show them what they're up against. So we're going to make a, some armor. We're also going to make a shotgun. Because nothing says get out of here like a shotgun. Make some shotgun shells and hit Q to cycle through to the next weapon in the bar. And go out again to the same people that, you know, to the same aliens that just killed us. And see if we can stand a chance a second time around. Toss these science packs in. Don't need them. Don't want to lose them. So, let's go out again. Got some uh, armor on this time. Got some better weapons. We can take them. Show them that a new boss is in town. But the, the way the fighting works is if there's a target within range, just hold down space and it'll automatically target them. It'll automatically shoot them. So combat is really, really easy in the game, but it's not really the main focus of it, so... Oh crap, it's not working! Switch over the pistol. Pistol fire fires a bit quicker. Uh-oh. They're gonna kill me again. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> As you can see, I'm not that good at it, so... You know what? They still kinda know what they're doing. I'm just gonna go home. <laughs> I give up. They win. They win. Don't really need to go aggravating them anyways. No good reason to. Oh well. Maybe we can try again another time. But yeah, that's how you die in the game. <laughs> yeah, looks like we're building up quite a bit of screen science, which is good. Can I also get level two armor crafting? Could use that. Oh well. But yeah, this is coming up at the end of the episode now. So going out and uh, sacking that alien base did successfully fill in 
the last five minutes of the video, which was the intention behind exploring. So yeah, in the next episode, we will do some more research, maybe try and think about expanding out a bit more, spreading our legs, maybe moving all this out of the way to fully utilize this iron supply here, and maybe focus on getting electric furnaces, which actually, electric furnaces are a long way away, so that's not going to be for a while. But also maybe get better gear and go show that alien base who's in charge. So yeah, that'll all happen next time, and maybe the time after that, because that's actually a lot of stuff to do, and it's going to take some quite a while. Maybe one episode might be not enough to fit all that. So anyways, it's the end of this one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.